Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Trisha Keen, and I'm one of the co-chairs of the Outreach and Engagement Committee of the Arroyo Advisory Group. I'd also like to introduce Mick Hansen, who's the other half of the Outreach and Engagement co-chair team. And I do not see Mick in the room, um, or I would ask her to stand up and wave. Um, I think she's outside in the lobby. Um, on behalf of the Arroyo Advisory Group, we would like to thank you a ton for being here tonight. I'm excited that you're here for what for the beginning of what we've been calling a listening tour. It will be an active and open process to engage the community, listen to your thoughts, hear your concerns, and take in your ideas of how to best protect, preserve, and enhance the Arroyo Seco. This will be one of many opportunities for members of the public to provide input. I want to introduce you to your speakers for this evening, three people who I think exemplify the creative spirit, passion, and dedication that Pasadena residents have for this beautiful city. But first, a bit of housekeeping so you know how the meeting's going to work tonight. First, we're going to start off with a video presentation about the inspiration for this AAG effort. That will be followed by a brief presentation about the group and the vision for protecting, preserving, and enhancing the Arroyo Seco. Then there'll be an opportunity for questions and comments from the public. There is a mic in the center of the room, and we'd ask that you line up at the mic to, add, to ask your questions and make your comments. If you are more comfortable writing down your questions rather than speaking in front of the group, there are comment cards on the table where you came in, and there'll be people in the room who'll have extra comment cards that you can wave to them and grab one during the meeting and fill it out. We can get it up to Bill and Doug, and to the extent we have time to read the questions and answer them tonight, we certainly will, and if we don't, if you include an email address, we'll get back to you, and we'll also try to put all of the questions and answers up on our website in a frequently asked questions section in the very near future. Um, we'll end the meeting at 8 o'clock so everyone can get home tonight. And at the end of that meeting, if you do have other questions that we didn't get to or you think of anything after we left, we'll make sure that you have information about how to get in touch with us. So now I'd like to introduce you to the three gentlemen that you'll be hearing from this evening. I've often heard Pasadena being described as having an embarrassment of riches when it comes to people who live in our city and volunteer their time, and I think that's an apt description for these three. I suspect a few of you have heard of one of the co-chairs of the AAG, Bill Bogart. <laughs> Mayor Bill recently completed 16 years of service as Pasadena's first directly elected mayor. What you might not know is that Mayor Bill actually did do a few other things here and there before becoming mayor of Pasadena. He was executive vice president and general counsel of First Interstate Bank Corp until its merger in the late 90s with Wells Fargo. Prior to First Interstate, he was a partner practicing corporate securities law in a Los Angeles law firm. And prior to that, he attended Loyola Marymount University and Michigan Law School. Mayor Bill has, has been involved in the Pasadena community for many, many years at this point, receiving the Arthur Noble Award in 1997, which is Pasadena's most prestigious recognition for community service. The other half of the co-chair team, Doug Cranwinkle, recently retired from his longtime gig as well. Until recently, Doug was the executive vice, vice president, general counsel, and secretary of Univision Communications. Prior to Univision, Doug was a partner at the Los Angeles law firms of Munger, Tolles, and Olson in O'Melveny and Myers, serving as managing partner at O'Melveny from 96 to 2000. Not long after law school, Doug was a law clerk to United States Supreme Court Chief Justice Earl Warren. And like Mayor Bill, Doug also went to Michigan Law School. Candidly, I don't think that Doug and Bill knew I was from Ohio when we started working together on the AAG. And anyone who knows about college football rivalries, no, I don't say this lightly, but go Buckeyes. <laughs> and Doug is also incredibly active in the Pasadena community, which he has called home since 1967. He's currently a board member of the Rose Bowl Operating Company and has previously served as president of the trustees of Polytechnic School. And Doug has also been involved with a number of other organizations in Pasadena, Los Angeles, and beyond. And finally, I'd like to introduce you to Don Hahn, who you'll be hearing from momentarily. Don is a film producer of some movies you might have heard of, like The Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, which I didn't realize was the first animated film ever nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. 
He's also founder and executive producer of the acclaimed Disney feature films, Earth, Oceans, African Cats, and Chimpanzee. But more importantly, I think, Don is a devotee of the Arroyo Seco. He has a studio on the rim of the Arroyo. It's an inspirational space where anyone could easily fall in love with the natural surroundings. And when Don isn't telling stories for film, he is storytelling about the Arroyo, a space that you'll see he loves and reveres. And so I'd like to take this opportunity to hand it over to Don and let him tell you his story of his vision of the Arroyo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm an unconventional planner for the Arroyo because I make cartoons for a living. Um, but there's more to it than meets the eye. I'm a storyteller, I'm a painter, I'm a, a landscape painter. And um, this place is full of story and interesting narrative that goes back hundreds of years. And for me, the joy of owning a property on the Arroyo and being with you today is telling that story and what inspires me about that story. So several months ago, I put together a deck of images. I'm a real visual learner, and so I put together images that inspired me about the Arroyo and what I thought was interesting about it. It's important to recognize also that these are just my ideas. They don't uh, reflect the ideas of the city or the committee. Uh, so if you, if you hate them, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. Uh, if you love them, fantastic. Uh, but they're meant to be inspiration. They're meant to be something we can share and, and talk about, discard some, keep some, and, and let it be a point of departure for our discussions about the Arroyo. So we can bring the lights down a little bit and I can go through this deck and show you some of the things that inspire me anyway about this Arroyo. And first, of course, is its history. This is what the Arroyo looked like well, 100 years ago or more. Uh, it was a beautiful place, um, wild as can be, as parts of it still are. Um, and it was somewhat informally broken up into three places. Even back then, the headwaters going all the way up into the mountains for miles off trails, coming down to um, a, a skinny little canyon uh, where uh, the rocks are in the shape of a devil uh, that went into the center of the, of the arroyo where now the Rose Bowl is and then down towards the south arroyo where it meets with the Los Angeles River. So in my mind, I just wanted to use those just to break the arroyo up and show that even though it's one arroyo, it has these zones to it uh, that have some meaning to it in my mind. Now the legacy of not only Pasadena, but the Arroyo itself is rich. Um, people like uh, Teddy Roosevelt came here, John Muir was a resident here, uh, Adolphus Bush developed the first Bush Gardens in Pasadena on the Arroyo. Einstein studied at Caltech, Julia Child, Jackie Robinson, Frank Lloyd Wright built houses along the Arroyo. And, and so the story of the Arroyo goes back years to these amazing people that came out here to take in the fresh air, when it was a spa town to escape from the, the cold cities in the east and, and enjoy Pasadena. <clears throat> this is Teddy Roosevelt, Anne, is this the right date now? This is Teddy Roosevelt in, I say 1911, Anne Scheid keeps me honest on virtually everything in my life. Um, it, it was 1903, this is Teddy Roosevelt, not far from where we're sitting right now in Pasadena on a campaign trail. And when he came here, he went to the Arroyo and he looked out over the Arroyo and said, this Arroyo would make one of the greatest parks in the world. What a great point of departure to have somebody who is totally supportive of our public spaces say that about our backyard. So that was my point of departure to look at the story of the Arroyo. Of course, the winter in Pasadena was celebrated with vast arrays of flowers, uh, the Tournament of Roses, and, and eventually after chariot racing and after ostrich races, eventually football uh, came to the Arroyo. I did a film about the Gamble House that was on PBS last month, and I'm happy to share the entire film with any of you pretty much any time you'd like, but I wanted to bring a little clip along that gives a tiny bit of history to Pasadena. This is what we looked like in 1893. <laughs> Pasadena in the late 19th century was quickly developing a reputation for being a very civilized cultural town, not really big enough to call a city, but a town with cultural pretensions that were real and well-founded. Pasadena was a booming place. There has always been 
money here. The interesting phenomenon was that it became a kind of winter resort for wealthy Midwest families. Valley Hunt Club, oh yes, well that was a sporting club. And they would ride to hounds and chase jackrabbits <laughs> in the wilderness that was Pasadena at that time. The Valley Hunt Club started this Tournament of Roses to attract people to come to Pasadena. The Rose Parade, the tournament, um, which began in about 1890, was all about celebrating being in this paradise. So here you are in January, and you have the sun shining, and you have these floats of flowers going down the street. And who else had that in the United States at that time? The football part of it didn't really come until after 1900. But prior to that, they took over a space in South Pasadena, and they had chariot races. I mean, how cool is that? The Rose Parade and those funky floats covered with flowers drawn by horses past a few hundred yards from where we're sitting right now. And the legacy of this place is unbelievable and full of layers and layers. John Muir, who lived in Pasadena for a time, said, thousands of tired, nerve-shaken, over-civilized people are beginning to find out that going to the mountains is going home, that wildness is a necessity, and that mountain parks and reservations are fountains of life. Well, those are pretty great words as a point of departure for what might be the Arroyo. It seems right to pay tribute maybe first and foremost to the Tongva Indians who were the uh, also called the Gabrielino Indians, who lived at the headwaters and fished and lived off of the water of the Arroyo. Um, so it makes some sense maybe even to have a tribute site to the Tongva that could be an educational site where school children could come and visit, hikers could come and visit, and realize that we weren't necessarily the first residents of the Arroyo. They were great stewards of the place, and I think they lay down a great example for all of us. Um, also, the headwaters way up in the canyons of the mountains could be an idea for what I call the Arroyo Muir Trail, um, something that could unite the entire Arroyo. And to me, it was a clothesline to hang all these ideas on. That if you could, and you almost can now, that you could hike from the headwaters of the Arroyo all the way down to where it meets the Los Angeles River, and that could be a pilgrimage. You could go all the way down and see all those sites or visit and experience all the things along the Arroyo. So that Arroyo Muir, Muir Trail is my clothesline that I hang these ideas on. Um, the other priority for me, and I love making wildlife films for Disney, and I love the wildlife in the Arroyo, um, to have open pathways for wildlife, to allow them to come down and enjoy the Arroyo along with us. Maybe not the mountain lions, but the rest of them and how unusual and unique they are. And there's places in the Arroyo like Kid Space that do an outstanding job educating our kids about the animals in the Arroyo. And I think part of our job is to educate and appreciate the animals that coexist with us in the space. So at the top of the Arroyo is the Hahamungna um, Wash. And it's wild and, in my opinion, kind of wonderful, uh, full of uh, seasonal pools. It needs many things. It needs habitat restoration. Yes, there's sediment that needs to be redistributed, and there's a lot of issues facing it. But its biggest asset, in my opinion, is its wildness. And uh, it seems like that's what's great about the ability to go up there and hike. Or if you've ever been part of Tom Slayer camps, or your kids have, that's up in that neck of the woods. Uh, my daughter rode at Rose Bowl Riders when she was a little girl, and riding is beautiful up there. And just walking through that part of the Arroyo is an experience in and of itself. It's also the place where we as a species explore Mars and other planets, which blows me away. This is a photograph from JPL not too many months ago of the sun. And to think that we explore the other planets from the Arroyo is uh, something that makes my head spin a little bit. And I love seeing the rovers practicing out in the parking lot. The very first Frisbee disc golf course in the world is in that part of the Arroyo. Built in 1974, you can still go up there and play today. And if you haven't been up there, to go up on the weekends and see people play disc golf, it's insane and fun and still allows it to be a wilderness area, but it also allows an organized activity up there with almost no impact to the wilderness. So here's Devil's Gate as it appeared uh, over 100 years ago on the right 
Um, not a place you want to be during flood season, but the rest of the year, a great tourist attraction for people over the last probably 130 or 40 years. Uh, this is what it looks like on the left today. Um, it's been stuccoed over a little bit so rocks don't fall on your head, but it's still there and you can still go back and see it. And it's the transition from Haha Magna into the central Arroyo. Uh, there's a challenge course in that area. The trail uh, is continuous, and much of the trail is really there. There's maybe some connective bits missing. There's probably some maintenance that needs to be done, but the trail exists in so many places in the Arroyo, and with a little work could be, again, the linking factor between all these amazing places. Um, so that trail could continue through that part of the wild uh, Arroyo before you get to the central Arroyo into um, the golf course. We all know the Central Arroyo probably most because that's where most of the activity takes place. Golf at Brookside is beautiful. Uh, the only thing that's not too beautiful is the concrete uh, uh, waterways. We know it has to function as a flood uh, basin and that's crucial. Uh, but there's ways, I think, over the long haul of turning that into more landscaped areas where the water can appear to be more wild and more of a natural setting. Um, the Central Arroyo, to me, offers a space to celebrate our local story and our local history. And I had a few ways to do that. One would be the lodge at Brookside. Um, another would be a legacy museum to celebrate the history of Pasadena, the history of the Tournament of Roses and the Rose Bowl. And another might be the Rose Garden. It seems logical for our city. Um, there is a golf course uh, now. You can go there and have a terrific bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich, which I do frequently. Um, but it's not necessarily themed in any particular way. And it seems like without developing and increasing the footprint of this place, it could be rethemed or reimagined as something that was more in the arts and crafts style. So this is the lodge at Brookside where you can go uh, check in for golf. Uh, you can have lunch. Uh, and enjoy an afternoon with friends in the lodge at Brookside, all done in the arts and crafts style, which grew up in this area with architects like Charles and Henry Green. You could even have a gourmet meal at a place called Green's um, with food in the shape of roses, with views of the golf course, and a gourmet meal at a place that looks like an arts and crafts restaurant. So fine dining is a possibility. Or eat at Julia's at Brookside to celebrate one of our most famous residents, Julia Child. Um, again, a place to go with friends for meetings, for community meetings, uh, even for weddings and family activities. Well, the Rose Garden is a similar place. <coughs> a place to hang out on a Sunday afternoon uh, before family activities. Uh, a place to have weddings and celebrate anniversaries in the same atmosphere as the Arroyo Seco. And of course, part of the, the history of the Arroyo Seco is football. Uh, General Patton, who was a Pasadena native, said, accept the challenges so that you can feel the exhilaration of victory. So as a sports venue, you know its legacy. As a concert and arts venue, it's becoming one of the world's great art stages. Um, and one of the possibilities for this place is to kind of celebrate it with a legacy museum. And that would be, yes, to celebrate the sports, but what if you're not a sports or football fan? Um, it's also a place to come and celebrate the tournament, the history of Pasadena, the history of the music festivals that have taken place there, maybe even to learn how to decorate a float um, and walk around and understand the history of Pasadena from its humble beginnings with a few families from Indiana to the construction of the bowl to today. Um, so that legacy museum is much more than a football museum, although it might have places like this that would be a concert stage for public meetings like this one tonight, or for TED Talks, or for school groups to come and learn about the Arroyo, a small theater uh, that allows you to, uh, it to be open to clubs and public uh, spaces uh, to enjoy that room as well. So this is just another idea for that museum. Uh, one of my favorite spaces, which I don't use enough, is the Loop. So if you can walk that 3.1 miles around the Loop, you know that it's incredibly active, and hundreds of thousands of people come to that Loop every day and walk around. It's something that I think should be celebrated and supported in pretty much the way it is now. It's a chance, too, to um, kind of formalize a, maybe a loop cafe, a place where you can give some water to your dog, have a coffee with friends while you meet there to walk around the loop. So that's the loop cafe. Um, the Rose Bowl flea market is part of the institution 
of the uh, Center Arroyo and one of the great things that happens once a month in the Arroyo. And Kid Space is one of my new favorite places um, since Michael introduced me to it. What I love about Kid Space is they're teaching things that normally we might consider as um, uh, physics that aren't appropriate for kids, that Caltech information and curriculum and things like that in a really analog, hands-on way that involves very few, if any, touch screens or digital monitors. It's all about picking up and feeling and touching and experiencing things having to do with life. And I love this, and it's a world-class museum, and the, the children's museums of the world were here in May to study and interact with our very own kids' space. So this is a place we should all be incredibly proud of. Um, Rose Bowl movie nights somewhere in the Arroyo is an opportunity to do outdoor, with headphones, movies. Um, it's a chance to sit down outside in a temporary space and watch movies. I selected Beauty and the Beast for obvious reasons, um, very self-serving reasons. Um, but you can wear headsets and, and it's completely quiet and you can bring your family there for a free movie night or a summer movie night to uh, encourage the community to get together in the Arroyo on the weekends. Jackie Robinson, one of our sports heroes, said, life is not a spectator sport. And certainly all the sports fields to the south of the Rose Bowl would bear that out and are really important to keep going in their best possible form, whether it's soccer or softball. Um, and at parts of the year, it might be parade float decorating. But there's also maybe another idea to reuse the, uh, the, the warehouses where the floats are decorated and turn them into places for indoor soccer for kids. This has become a really popular activity around the country in places where it's either too snowy or too blasted hot to play soccer outside, and for the little kids to bring in an air conditioning unit and for the summer months allow them to play soccer inside doesn't impact the wonderful work of the Tournament of Roses, but also allows for kind of a safe and healthy atmosphere for Rose Bowl indoor soccer in those same spaces. The Aquatic Center, uh, a longtime resident in the, in the bowl, uh, space in the central arroyo continues to be an important part of the activities there as does the tennis center um, and of course it's a host to many many other activities like the amgen tour of california that came through and frequently finishes in the area ucla football a common and long-term great attendant to the rose bowl to have college football in this place is terrific uh, I'm, you may want to throw me out, but I'm not a huge football fan, but I love football in the college world and I love the Rose Bowl game. Uh, it's exciting and it's the kind of attachment to Pasadena that I think is really valuable. There used to be a theater in the Arroyo that hasn't been there for a long, long time. And that was a small outdoor amphitheater uh, and I think the chance to bring that back in a small way could be terrific. Just like Regent's Park in London or Central Park in New York, to have an Arroyo outdoor theater that's a acoustic, uh, non-amplified space to do plays like Hamlet, Death of a Salesman, Much Ado About Nothing, A Raisin in the Sun, allow groups to come in and put on shows in the summertime, probably just on the weekends, to allow you to see great uh, plays outdoors under the eucalyptus trees. Could be fun. The, the, uh, the, the Rose Bowl itself has the potential of becoming a concert space. I love using the Central Arroyo as an arts venue. I feel like it's really uh, sympathetic with who we are as Pasadena residents. And so to do summer concerts in a small portion of the center of the Arroyo makes some sense to me. Uh, my nutty idea is to take just a portion of the bowl itself and turn it into a Hollywood Bowl-like venue where you could put in a concert shell this is actually the concert shell in Millennium Park in Chicago, designed by Frank Gehry. But by putting it in the end zone, you could sponsor uh, great outdoor opera, concerts, and events that were small in scale and catered to uh, residents of Pasadena and, and create things like the Arroyo Seco Weekend in a concert series uh, in the Bowl area. So that's just a possibility. Now we move from the hub down into the South Arroyo, which is wild, uh, often overloved, uh, over freeway, uh, and, and frequently misused. But there's some beautiful places. Anshai took us hiking down there into some unbelievably beautiful places recently. And, and uh, this is a chance for the Arroyo Muir Trail to continue, for us all to keep walking south and keep going along a much more wild spot. Uh, there's an opportunity here for habitat restoration, uh, bringing stream bed back, bringing some of the wildlife, even the fish back to the stream, 
um, with fish ladders, there's wetlands possibility for restoration. And some of this work has been done already and just needs maintenance work. There was some great work done um, probably 20, 25 years ago in this area. Um, it's also basically where Bush Gardens was. This is what Bush Gardens looked like back in 1909. And the, the kind of visual of Bush Gardens was very much a national park visual. It was boulders from the arroyo that were built into steps and bridges and logs that were railings. And that wildness, that kind of national park look is something I think is really appropriate for the arroyo. So that you're not bringing in outside materials, you're bringing in materials that exist there, that are in the arroyo and of the arroyo, and letting that architecture grow out of the ground. And that's what Green and Green did with the Gamble House. That was the essence of arts and crafts architecture, is using the natural world around us as an antidote to modern machine technology, computers, that kind of thing. There's some wonderful spaces down there. The roving archer space is dynamic, interesting uh, spot in the Arroyo to take place. Uh, an archery, the casting pond, recently redone in the last 10 years or so. A great place to practice your fly fishing, which I'm terrible at. Um, and horseback riding. Um, my family rides horses. I don't, but my wife and daughter do. And the legacy of riding in this area goes back to the founding of Pasadena and something that's crucially important, I think, to the Arroyo itself. <laughs> and to be able to ride this trail in large part, I think, is an important part of Pasadena history and part of the story. So as we go down into the South Arroyo, we run across some great stables, the San Pasquale stables. Um, it's also a place of art. Along with Laguna Beach, Pasadena has a history of outdoor plein air painting. It was one of the homes of the California Impressionist movement in the turn of the century. I'm a painter, I idolize these painters that worked and lived in Pasadena during that era. And the California Art Club still exists in a very dynamic, active way. And it's one of the many stakeholders in the Arroyo that I think would love to see the wildness of the Arroyo continue. So it's the California Art Club. The Arroyo Muir Trail then, with a little bit of restoration, could continue down into the southern part of the Arroyo. Um, there could even be wild bike trails. Uh, don't panic, this is not a proposed cycleway from today. This is one from probably 1890, I'm thinking, a long time ago. Um, and it was a, a bike trail that was actually built. Uh, an elevate, <laughs> please hold your applause to the end. Um, it was actually built and meant to go from uh, Pasadena all the way to downtown LA. Uh, you paid a small toll and you could ride your bike all the way up and down. Uh, bicycling, as you know, is huge these days in cities, not just Los Angeles, but all around the world. I was in Berlin a month ago. Their streets were full of bicycles. You can't go to Amsterdam without being hit by a bicycle. Um, so the opportunity to put something into the Arroyo, maybe not this developed, but something that's a wilder mountain bike trail with the opportunity to go across the bridges of the Arroyo with your family on mountain bikes on a weekend, seems like a really fun and timely idea. The Arroyo Seco Golf Course is down in the south of the Arroyo. Um, and some very cool uh, heritage architectural spots. Not only Heritage Square, where some of the old Bunker Hill mansions have been moved from the history of Los Angeles, but also the Loomis House, which if you haven't been to, is one of the coolest houses made of river rock for uh, one of the founders of the area. The Autry Museum, which is the old uh, California um, Heritage Museum. And they're all along the Arroyo in this area. But sadly, the Arroyo looks a little like this. Um, and, and repairing this into a long-term uh, fix is maybe going to take a while, but the city of Los Angeles is joining up with the Arroyo and talking about turning this confluence area into something more like this. So still the wildness of the streams, the jogging trails, a chance to go with your family and enjoy the Arroyo in a park-like setting. So when I look at the Arroyo, I see a story, and I see a legacy that we can really celebrate and lean into and grab onto and pull back into the Arroyo. Uh, it's a legacy uh, of great sports, but also a legacy, legacy of statesmen and women who want to turn this space and keep it into a wild Arroyo. Uh, great accomplished people, be they John Muir, be they uh, General Patton, be they uh, Julia Childs, who grew up in this area and were inspired by the people and places in Pasadena, and I think claiming that legacy is so much a part of what we need to do. Finally, another quote from John Muir, everybody needs beauty as well as bread, places to play in and pray in where nature may heal and give strength to body and soul alike. 
Well, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um, those are the uh, stakeholders. Of course, this has to be done not only with the involvement of places like the Gamble House and the Huntington and so many amazing institutions in this area, but also with people like you. And we're really grateful that you're here tonight uh, to allow us to listen to your ideas and uh, develop this whole plan for an inspirational space in our midst in the Arroyo Seco. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. I know many of you have very difficult jobs. Many of you take on very complicated tasks all the time. But tonight, it is I who comes to this podium having to follow Don Hahn. <laughs> it can't be done. Before getting started, I want to express thanks to the Arroyo Advisory Group Committee Outreach and Engagement, which is co-chaired by uh, Tricia Keene and uh, Mick Hansen. Uh, they're doing such a great job, and they're launching a very aggressive effort over the next six months to have meetings like this where members of our community can offer their suggestions, uh, their inspiration, and their uh, constraints on how we should think of the Arroyo Seco going forward. I just have one additional comment to offer to Trish. Go blue. <laughs> <laughs> With the inspiration provided by Don Hahn, uh, uh, his creative video, a number of people last year started to think about the Arroyo in a new light, ultimately talking about an effort to demonstrate the Arroyo as a precious and distinctive natural resource. In his State of the City remarks in January, Mayor Tornick suggested this is the right time to re-examine the city's approach to the Arroyo Seco. And a few weeks later, he said, speaking to the Arroyo Seco Foundation, we want people to step back and think about the whole Arroyo as a living organism and participate in making it a world-class location. As everyone knows, over the years, the Arroyo has been the subject of many planning efforts. And numerous improvements have been suggested, intended to enhance the area and improve the user experience. The most recent planning effort, which dates back to the early 2000s, resulted in separate master plans covering Hahamanga, the Central Arroyo, and the Lower Arroyo. The estimated cost of projects identified in these plans exceeds $80 million. And these have all been carefully studied by our community and approved by the council. Unfortunately, only a few of them have been completed, due primarily to limited financial resources. Obviously, one of the principal elements of this new effort is to identify new sources of funding. Our efforts in regard to funding will recognize that the annual maintenance of the Arroyo is essential if the goal to assure its preservation for a future generation. There are various factors that, that make this a worthwhile time, a, a good time, to consider the future of the Arroyo. Its overall role in the city and uh, the region and its many activities. These reasons include possible changes by the National Park Service that could reduce existing federal protections in the mountains above the uh, Arroyo. The potential habitat restoration project of the Army Corps of Engineers that could, if additional funding is made available, remove the concrete channel in the Arroyo, a project that is active even though it is currently unfunded. The risks and the impact of the Los Angeles County's sediment removal project at Devil's Gate Dam, which is delayed but will surely proceed in the next year or two. Finally, there are potential expansions of uh, the Rose Bowl Aquatic Center and Kid Space Museum, which uh, raises uh, questions for the Arroyo Seco as a whole. As the city staff considered this effort regarding the Arroyo to help and to help analyze the opportunities involved, uh, it engaged HR&A, a national consulting group, 
The firm has been involved in similar efforts over the years, including the High Line and Brooklyn Bridge Parks in New York City and the Anacostia Waterfront in Washington, D.C. In each case, HRNA assisted its clients to develop a community vision and to identify funding streams needed to fulfill that vision. Its work over more than 20 years shows that substantial non-governmental funding is available for major parks. Central Park in New York City is a central example. And we look at Central Park and its experience over the years of developing a strong conservancy uh, as a, a source of learning for us in our effort. Further, the city manager and the Rose Bowl general manager assembled an advisory group of Pasadena persons who are well versed in the history and the values of Pasadena, have a passion for the Arroyo, and offer strong background in business and finance. The members of the group are portrayed here. Several are here tonight, uh, including uh, uh, Phil Hawkey, Tim Martinez, Tom Seifert, Mick Hansen, John Dean, Don Fetty, and perhaps others whom I've, I've overlooked uh, inadvertently. Uh, there are 20 members of, in this group who come from various corners of our community including Art Center College of Design, Easter Royal Residence Association, JPL, San Fernando Valley, COG, Council of Governments, the Rose Bowl Operating Company, the Arroyo Seco Foundation, Pasadena Heritage, Wells Fargo, and several other significant businesses and organizations. In the few months since AAG was formed, it has worked hard to get organized and to formulate a plan for doing what the City Council asked it to do. It has developed a list of responsibilities, which is, in effect, an outline of the uh, uh, report uh, AAG will ultimately deliver to the Council. Uh, the elements of our study, as we envision it at this point, and we're still learning, we have a lot to learn, uh, community engagement is a priority, Meetings like this will continue, maybe not this size, uh, in, in the six months ahead in every corner of Pasadena. Uh, community engagement, uh, excuse, excuse me, I, I missed uh, the, the vision, which, which we'll come to in a second, because we've developed a tentative vision to guide our work so far, recognizing that it's only tentative until we have much more, much additional input from the community. Financial planning is already clearly portrayed as a, an important need. Compliance with regulatory requirements, priorities, uh, helping to understand what projects should go forward uh, uh, and when they might go forward, when they should receive priority, an implementation plan and a management plan. Uh, the Arroyo Advisory Group established four committees, the Vision Statement Committee, Outreach and Engagement, projects and priorities, and financial planning. The vision statement in this effort uh, asks, answers, attempts to answer the question, what, it, what is it that makes the Arroyo unique and invaluable to Pasadena? The intent is to offer a statement that expresses, on behalf of our community, what we all hope for in the precious natural, uh, nat nat natural space that President Teddy Roosevelt said, as we heard earlier, could be the finest park in the world. The draft vision statement is on the slide. I won't read it all, but I'll just highlight. Pasadena's great outdoor space, the historic Arroyo Seco, will become one Arroyo. Its, its habitats, its resources, and historic sites will be preserved enhanced and connected by an extraordinary end-to-end -end trail, all anchored by a central hub. As I mentioned, uh, we consider this to be a tentative proposal until our effort is nearly finished and we have the benefit of extensive community input. Let me turn to the Outreach and Engagement Committee. Uh, the Outreach and Engagement Committee 
has described its, its program in three phases. The first, introducing the vision. And uh, it has organized, and Doug Krenwinkel and I have participated in several community meetings already in the first half of this year, in which we have talked as we are tonight about what the Arroyo Advisory Group is intending to, to do. The second phase is the listening tour that is getting started tonight. We consider this the, the first of, a, of an active listening tour, which outreach and engagement will pursue in the months ahead. And finally, there'll be, uh, uh, and, and all of us will be called upon to help in activating and implementing uh, whatever proposal and approaches the City Council ultimately approves. In the next few weeks, we'll, we will have other community meetings around the city, as I mentioned, intentionally extending to all districts. The outreach effort will include an online presence, a website, appearances at already scheduled events, uh, surveys both online and through existing organizations. Volunteers will be needed and welcome. Let me mention that the website is operational for uh, our effort. Uh, go to onearroyo.org, O-R-G, onearroyo.org. I now have the pleasure of turning over the podium uh, to Doug Cranwinkel, co-chair of Arroyo Advisory Group. Thank you, Bill. Uh, I've lived near the Arroyo for 50 years now, since we moved to Pasadena, and I've known Bill longer than that. We, were, we met our first year in law school in 1962. Uh, we were both much younger then. <laughs> we very much a chance to appreciate the chance tonight to have this conversation with all of you. We are grateful to you for being here with us. We're going to talk tonight about the Arroyo Seco, one of Pasadena's most important, if not its most important asset. It's a great place. I'm going to cover three activities of the Arroyo Advisory Group. First, determining projects and priorities. Second, finding funding for those projects and priorities. And third, and finally, governance or better coordination of activities in the Arroyo Seco, especially in the hub. The first of these projects and priorities is both the easiest and the hardest task we face. It's the easiest because the range of possibilities is so vast. There's so many things that could be done down there. But that vast range is also what makes it hard. You have to choose between all these many possibilities and select the few that are fundable and doable like regulatory-wise and otherwise. This multitude of possibilities. As Bill mentioned, there are already $80 million worth of approved projects within the Oro Seco under the master plans, but are, they're unfunded. We're looking at those as part of the priorities that we'll be considering. Tonight you had a chance to watch Don Hahn's inspirational video showing one man's dream of how the Arroyo might evolve. There's simply no shortage of things that could be done for the Arroyo with an unlimited budget. But we don't have an unlimited budget, and nor are we likely to have that. Uh, in any event, some of those things would be controversial. It probably wouldn't happen in any event. You see on this slide a generic description of just some of the projects that have been suggested so far. There are many more, and we want to add your ideas to this list. Within each of these generic descriptions are several potential specific projects. For example, up there it says, restoring, preserving, or rehabilitating various structures. That little sentence could encompass a whole number of structures. The bird sanctuary, the old rockery, the amphitheater that Don talked about, the abandoned forest service buildings up in Hahamunga. A number of structures down there need work, and it could be quite useful to us if we had the wherewithal and the will to make it happen. The Projects Committee is headed by Tom Seifert, who's here tonight also. Tom is chair of the Arroyo Seco Foundation and a man who knows the territory intimately. He's doing a great job at that chair. As projects are proposed, the committee will run them through what they refer to as a grinder. And my mother had one of these 
when I was a kid, and it looked just like that. Put the meat up here and grind it, came out down below. Uh, they run it through a grinder which considers a, a number of items. I've just listed a few here. Uh, does it fit with our one Arroyo vision? That's, we start with that. Does this project fit with the idea of one Arroyo? Does it mesh with the master plans? We have three master plans for the Arroyo upper, lower, and central, and we have to make sure that it meshes with those plans, even though we're trying to look at it holistically as one Arroyo. And finally, or not finally, does it have likely funding sources? Can it be funded? And how complex will the regulatory considerations be to get it done? No easy thing. The Projects Committee and the AAG as a whole, and last week the City Council, have concluded that a connected, completed, repaired, and better marked Muir Trail, as Don refers to it, is foundational to the vision of one Arroyo, the clothesline on which all things can be hung, it connects the entire Arroyo. There are about 22 miles of trail within the Arroyo Seco now, but they suffer from deferred or non-maintenance, poor connectivity in various areas, and inconsistent and inadequate signage throughout. Planning for this project has now been funded, and we, will believe, we believe that it will provide an impetus and a foundation for further projects. We have, by the way, as we indicated earlier, a unique asset in Don Hahn. Not only did he provide the initial inspiration with his video, but he has now arranged for the Art Center College of Design to have a class this fall dedicated to our project, the One Arroyo. Thank you, Don. And I suspect we'll get a lot of really good ideas and good design concepts from that class. It'll, it'll be a lot of fun. I wish I could be a student there. So we have a big bucket, wonderful ideas, but we don't yet have a big sack full of dollars to pay for either their initial execution or their ongoing or the ongoing maintenance. It's really important that we not just fund something and put it together and then forget about it. That's been done before. We need to make sure that if we put some, a new thing in the oil, it's funded for maintenance into the future. It won't just die. Now there are those who say the city has been here before, nothing has come of it, and therefore this project is a big pipe dream and a waste of money. I understand that point of view. I even have some friends who have that point of view, but I don't share it. To me, the Arroyo Seco, as I indicated earlier, is an enormous asset of this city. It was recognized by no less a person than Teddy Roosevelt 100 years ago. The recent drought has not been good for the Arroyo. A lot of trees and other natural plant life down there have died or withered. It needs and deserves our attention. I believe we can find sources of funding for this if we make a strong case for it, and if the citizenry of the Pasadena, you and others, get behind it and help us get it done. This great city deserves a great park, and the Arroyo Seco is already a great park, it can be a greater park. The Arroyo Advisory Group's Finance Committee is ably led by Dan Rothenberg, and it's working on a plan. It will likely involve some combination of city, federal, state, and county funding, grants from conservancies and foundations, and contributions from corporations and individuals. We will almost certainly create a Friends of the Arroyo Seco group, and I hope all of you will join with us in that group when it gets started. We may also end up recommending new revenues from increased rents or other charges to institutional users of the Arroyo Seco, special assessments, non-resident parking fees, and so on and so on, especially to, again, to ensure ongoing maintenance, a vital subject. We also plan to draw on help from such entities as the Royal Seiko Foundation, the Trust for Public Land, the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, and so on. In addition, we hope to bring the California Conservation Corps back to Pasadena to help with cleaning up and maintaining the Royal Seiko. By the way, mark November 18 on your calendars. It'll be a big day, first one Arroyo day, there'll be many more, and we hope to see all of you there. You'll hear more about that in the coming weeks. Trish in charge of the committee that's putting that together. It'll be quite a day, and I hope to see many of you, if not all of you, there. Now, we all agree that financing is a knotty issue. It always is. But even knottier may be the issue of how to better govern the Arroyo Seco, at least or at least better coordinate the activities down there. 
The central arroyo is a beehive of activity on almost any day you go down there. There are bicyclers, walkers, events going on, lots happening in the central arroyo. It's busy. Uh, in addition to the Rose Bowl, which holds world, hosts world-class sporting and concerts, there are several other world-class institutions down there. The Aquatic Center is one such place, as is Kids Space. Both serve diverse, active, and large clientels, several hundred thousand each year in those two places. I've had occasion in the past six months to get to know both of those places much better than I ever had before. They're remarkable. They serve an enormous, diverse, diverse ages, diverse ethnicity, et cetera. A huge number of people, and they serve them very well, and they want to expand. But when the Rose Bowl has an event down there, and one of those places has an event, it really gets busy. It's, it's really difficult to coordinate. Now, governance should be easy, right? After all, this is a park that's 100% owned by the city of Pasadena. What could be easier? You just make rules and they happen. But remember, first and foremost, it's a watershed. It's a big drain. It comes down from the mountains and dumps water at the end of the day into the LA River and the ocean. And back in 1938, there was a major flood which engulfed what is now Bush Gardens. So we have to always be aware that this is a drain. It's a watershed. It's an important place in that respect. In addition, that means that the LA County Flood Control District has jurisdiction down there. The Army Corps of Engineers has some rights and jurisdiction down there. Forest Service also. So though Pasadena owns it 100%, there are others who have the ability to say yes and no in the area. Then there are the dozen or so entities, again like Kit Space, the Aquatic Center, the Roving Archers, the Casting Club, Tom Sawyer Camps, the Rose Bowl Riders, and on and on that occupy space under contracts with various terms and length of terms with the city of Pasadena. And then to complicate it further, within the city there are entities there are three entities, not just one, with develop overlapping responsibilities. You have the RBLC, which runs the Rose Bowl and the golf course. And then there are the departments of public works and human services and recreation, each of which has responsibilities and jurisdiction in the Arroyo. A variety of possible governance structures will be considered. An obvious such animal is a conservancy of the nature of the one that runs Central Park in New York City that would contract with the city to run all or a portion of the Arroyo Seco. But before moving in any direction on the issue of governance, we plan to reach conclusions on projects that will affect how the Arroyo will look 10, 20, 30, and more years beyond, and also to get a sense of where the money is going to come from to get there and stay there, because those factors, the projects and where the money comes from, may be drivers as to what governance should be put in place. In any event, thanks for your attention. I look forward to hearing from you tonight about your ideas of what we should be doing in the Arroyo on all these subjects, projects, money, management, whatever. Thanks for being here and thanks for listening. I'll turn it back to Bill. We're nearly at the point where you have the opportunity to pose questions tonight. And as we've emphasized, that's only the beginning of your opportunity to be part of this effort in the weeks and the months ahead. Let me try to answer one question that might come up, might be on your mind. Why is this effort for the Arroyo Seco different from the many efforts that have taken place over the years? Here's what the AAG intends to do. It will focus on one Arroyo without forgetting the unique features and opportunities of the separate areas of Hahamunga the Central Arroyo, and the Lower Arroyo. The goal is, is to think of the Arroyo holistically as a great and extensive open space. We intend to expand the awareness of the Arroyo Seco throughout the city, strengthening political support. Emphasis will be given to its history, its variety of natural features and resources, its uniqueness in Southern California, its extensive use for recreational purposes, and its potential to be Pasadena's Central Park. The advisory group will take a fresh look, as we've discussed, at priorities in the Arroyo based on community input and, char and characterize them in categories of near-term, mid-term, and short-term. Uh, early on, we hope to demonstrate the grandeur and the importance of the Arroyo by reestablishing and, com and completing 
the system of trails on the banks of the arroyo and enhancing arroyo maintenance and upkeep. As mentioned this evening, this effort has a primary focus on identifying new sources of funding to implement and to sustain the projects approved. Such sources will include, as Doug Krenwinkel has ably presented, grants and philanthropy, memberships, uh, funding under federal and state bonds, and public-private partnerships. One other question uh, I'll anticipate, how will final decisions in this effort be made? I should say that the advisory group is a temporary, not a permanent organization. It is advisory and has no authority to make decisions except with respect to submitting recommendations to the City Council. Uh, the advisory group will appear before the Council next in December. Ultimately, it will submit its recommendations to the Council, which will, the Council will make final decisions. So, uh, in conclusion, I want to say how grateful we are that you all came this evening and how much we hope that you will become active in this effort. With your help, we want the Arroyo Seco to find its place as a legacy for all of Pasadena today and tomorrow to experience and enjoy. Thank you again for, for being here, and uh, please uh, prepare to offer your questions uh, at, at the microphone in the center. Mick Hansen, co-chair of the Committee Outreach and Engagement, has agreed to, uh, to uh, coordinate the questions and uh, feed them to the panel, uh, and we'll do our best to answer them tonight. And if we don't answer them tonight, uh, we'll get back to you uh, in, in the near future. Good evening, my name is Daniel Rossman. I live in the San Rafael Hills, uh, and I, I work with the Wilderness Society, serve on the Environmental Advisory Commission appointed by Steve Madison, and I'm incredibly excited about this project. I have two young children, and part of the reason I chose to move to Pasadena was because of the high quality of life and recreational opportunities. There are, are two things I wanna highlight, one is, thinking about the sort of federal resource impact. One is the Angeles National Forest in and of itself. I serve with uh, Tim and some others on the San Gabriel Valley, or sorry, San Gabriel Mountains Community Collaborative that's looking at management of the San Gabriel Mountains. Uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu has legislation to expand the National Monument to include that section of the uh, Upper Aurora in the National Forest. Uh, and I think uh, we should, as we're looking holistically, think about that upper, upper watershed. Um, and want to give a shout out to the congressional offices who have uh, staff attending, both Congresswoman Judy Chu and with Enrique Robles and uh, Congressman Adam Schiff. Teresa, are you still here? Well, anyway, it's great to have those uh, representatives here. Uh, and then the second piece, uh, I am a Pasadena resident and I feel uh, a lot of pride in that, but I also get a little bit nervous when I think about uh, potentially charging other, other residents, because we exist in a county that is incredibly park poor, uh, and the opportunity for this to serve not only the, the residents of Pasadena, but many of the park poor communities that surround Pasadena is incredibly important. And so as we look at that option, I, I really hope we weigh this issue of real environmental justice and ensure that everyone in our community in the broadest sense has an opportunity to access this important resource. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there, I'm uh, Lori Paul and I'm a resident of Altadena. Some of us actually live closer to the upper Arroyo Seco and Hahamangna than uh, people in Pasadena. I urge the advisory committee to involve organizations like our own Altadena Crest Trail Restoration Working Group and uh, other activist uh, groups up in the Altadena and La Cunada Flint Ridge area. Uh, of course, you've involved JPL, but it's, it's more than that. Um, we have, for example, an opportunity to highlight on the Rim of the Valley Trail Corridor, uh, a plan that's been championed by Adam Schiff and uh, is a part of the plan that's already enforced with the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, 
uh, a trail hub, which is where four really important trail systems meet in the Upper Arroyo. And having some sort of uh, monument is an effort that some of us have been promoting for quite some time, where you have four trail systems come together in Hahamanga. Uh, that would be, of course, uh, north up in the Gamberlino Trail, up in the Upper Arroyo Seco, um, to, the, uh, to the west and the La Quinata Trail System. To the east, we're restoring the Altadena Crest Trail, and it's got very important destinations like uh, the famous abolitionist Owen Brown's grave site is on a connecting trail. Um, we've got uh, Millard Canyon and access into uh, some natural areas that are very important, pr particularly for lower income persons who can use the walk-in campground facilities. And uh, there's Cobb Estate and many other places in Altadena that could be destinations for those walking up from Pasadena and from other communities. Then, of course, to the to the south, we've we've got the uh, connection to the Pasadena trails. So this four trail hub idea for the Upper Arroyo is something I'd like to see incorporated in some of your plans, and I'd like to see some outreach in our communities because we can also be a resource to uh, work on this concept and connect everything. And I'm sure you're aware of the old emerald necklace uh, ideas for planning all the way down, uh, connecting our uh, drainages and watershed and creeks and naturalizing them all the way down to the Pacific Ocean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Jonathan. Um, I'm a Pasadena resident and uh, I want to say this sounds uh, like a, a really good plan. Um, I've been talking about um, I've been advocating for a, a, a watershed approach to managing the Arroyo Seco for a long time with Tim Brick and Tim Martinez at the Arroyo Seco Foundation, so I'm excited for uh, this advisory committee to continue that advocacy. Um, I just want to express my concerns, and I don't think it is a concern from what you guys have presented today, but my concern is that um, this uh, plan might emphasize too much on economic, economic activity um, and it doesn't sound like it is, but that is my concern. I just wanted to express that. Also, my, my other concern is um, building permanent structures in the Arroyo Seco. I think, and again, you guys didn't present anything um, like that, but I would like to express my concern about um, keeping permanent structures out of the Arroyo Seco. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Felicia Williams, Pasadena resident in the central part of Pasadena, also on the planning commission in Pasadena, and just came off the Rose Bowl Operating Company board as well. Uh, my comment has to do with um, there is limited ingress and egress into the Arroyo, so it gets congested very easily, and the Rose Bowl has, deals with this with all of their events, but even on regular days it can get very congested. So. Uh, if, we if we develop alternative access to the Arroyo, we can reduce a lot of that congestion that is, um, is a negative impact on the neighborhoods as well as on the environment in the Arroyo. So the two suggestions that I would have, um, I emailed Daryl Dunn from the swap meet because I went there and they now have bike parking, <laughs> which is also great because then you don't buy big items at the swap meet and spend all your money. So it's, it's just, Very it's like a win-win. Yeah. So, um, but um, bike racks, no um, and bike right. parking right. in the Arroyo so that people don't have to drive there. And that also fits within our general plan. Um, the challenge is that it, it um, there's parking that is that is pay for parking that's in the golf course and those sorts of things, so that needs to be worked out. But just having bike racks in the Arroyo at the Aquatic Center at Kids Space. And secondly, um, wayfinding signs, the Arroyo is not far from the metro station. It's walkable, it's completely walkable. And I went to the Arroyo Seco Festival and there weren't any signs. Little did I know it was all in the app, so download the app. Uh, but you, you can find your way pretty easily into the Arroyo and it's very, you can walk there from Old Pasadena. And that would reduce the number of cars down there uh, as well. So I think the, Rose Bo the RBOC is doing great work um, <laughs> experimenting with events and having bike valet and that sort of thing. But if we can move that into sort of a general theme in the Arroyo, people can get there easier and not use a car and reduce the congestion, that would make it um, a lot healthier as well. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Felicia. Thank you. Uh, yes, um, good evening. I'm Mary D. Romney. I'm president of the San Rafael Neighborhoods Association. I like the concept of the drain. Um, 
At the top, we have a 100-year flood, the top of the drain. At the bottom, we have fire. And in the middle, we have a dream. And I think the top and the bottom of the drain need to be addressed before we over-commercialize the hub. Um, and I would suggest um, investigating the settlement that the city has with the Spirit of the Sage Council. That's one of the things we're very concerned about in the Lower Arroyo. Um, cleanup is not allowed there except when it crosses trails. Um, and a lot of cleanup is needed. So that's one of our concerns. Um, aside from the vision, and I appreciated the film, um, going back to the first update of the general plan, it was pointed out we have very limited parkland in this city. And the statistics coming from the federal government set by the National Recreation and Parks Association is a recommendation for 9.6 acres of parkland per 1,000 residents. 9.6 acres per 1,000. Pasadena has 2.4 acres per 1,000 residents. And the update to the general plan in 2004 said that parkland will remain below the standard level of service in the future because of the scarcity of available land for purchase by the city for use as public parks. The pressure relief valve for this scarcity is the central arroyo. And that is where we see tonight so much commercialization. And I've noticed that the collective skill set of the Arroyo Advisory Group seems to be focused on development in the Central Arroyo. And, and I think there needs to be a sharp focus on making sure that local residents have a place to recreate. And this has nothing to do with bringing people in and charging for parking and charging fees. This is where they recreate because we have such a very limited park space in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tim Brick with the, the managing director of the Arroyo Seca Foundation. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, for pity's sake, Tim. <laughs> We, <laughs> we apologize on Tim's behalf. <laughs> uh, good evening. I'm uh, Nina Chomsky from the Linda Vista Annandale Association. So it looks like we're paying a little more attention to the three master plans. You know, there are people in the room here and other people I know who devoted portions of their lives to previous policy planning, hundreds of hours from our area and otherwise. And not just the three master plans, but the uh, open space and conservation easement of the general, I mean, uh, element of the general plan. And that hasn't been referred to at all. And why are we not referring to the um, Urban Land Institute study? Now, they were brought in to tell the Rose Bowl how to further commercialize the Central Arroyo. And they said, well, we can make a few improvements here and there to the uh, clubhouse and whatever. But they said, no, don't commercialize the Central Arroyo uh, commercial hub or whatever you're envisioning. Make it a natural, as much as possible, a natural area. And they provide a roadmap on how to do this. So have you read this? Have you studied it? Have you internalized it? Are you going to implement it? And they said it's one of the great areas to be uh, naturalized. Um, it may sound good to have movies and more restaurants and more whatever we want, I think, those who are open space advocates, and I'm, and I'm going to include neighborhoods, but open space advocates, we want um, less traffic, less commercial use, less in and out, and more recreation and open space and natural area. And I'll get to my final comment is funding. And that's the elephant in the room. And what is the, or the two elephants in the room or in the city. And those are the Rose Bowl and the Legacy Foundation. That's where the money is 
follow the money. Yes, they need 10, 11, maybe $12 million for new seats in the Rose Bowl. I don't argue about that. But after that, they are accumulating and raising millions and millions of dollars. What is the real source of the degradation of the Central Arroyo and the intense use and the traffic and the endless people and the endless noise and sound? It's the events. And it's not just the major events. It's all the small events. And it's all cumulative. And what should we do? Well, let's pick a percent. I would say a third. Maybe it's 25 percent. And after we finish the seats in the Arroyo, let's have a fund created, a benefit assessment district, the several number of neighbors in the Linda Vista area who have advocated for this over the years. Take all that, take the major fundraiser and fundraising entities in the Central Arroyo, put money aside and fund all these pre-approved, pre-conceived, pre-prioritized projects, and then we can do what you really want to do, and you can have the funds that you need. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ken Chalkins. I'm a Pasadena resident and a member of the San Rafael Neighborhood Association. First, a note, there's a little bit too much Stanford, not enough UCLA in the video. Yeah, I, I don't know who did it, yeah. but just, just a point no, of order. Guilty as charged. Uh, <laughs> Look, I spent a, a couple of suggestions, two unrelated suggestions. First, I spent a lot of time working in the Pasadena Unified School District on various levels, and it was um, a significant amount of effort to remind people that PUSD includes Altadena and Sierra Madre. This could just be marketing, but could also be um, a more significant issue. This is the, a Pasadena effort, and I understand that. But the area you're talking about not only includes above Pasadena in La Cañada, and below Pasadena in South Pass, and Altadena. Not least of which is the people who use the Arroyo, a very small percentage are from Pasadena. Most of them come from lots of places. Is it marketing to just call it the Pasadena plan and, and, and to pay attention to the language that we use about who owns it, who operates it, who governs it, who makes decisions? I think is significant. Um, from a marketing perspective, what would make South Pasadena want to participate in helping down by the stables? You're calling it a Pasadena plan, well then you figure out how to find the money. Just a note. <clears throat> Secondarily, if you noticed in your comments, the one big applause that you got was when you mentioned an educational institution, the Arts Center, and their participation. My suggestion is perhaps to include Pasadena Unified and the other unified school districts, you might attract educational dollars rather than environmental dollars or preservation dollars. Um, we did a project at McKinley where we built an entire mosaic mural, all built by the kids. We attracted dollars supportive of an educational effort because the kids were building the mural. It wasn't an arts mural, it was a kids' educational project. All of these projects have the potential to have kids learning, participating, and attracting significant dollars from educational institutions that want to help kids learn how to preserve rather than environmental. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Uh, congratulations to all three of you. Dan, that was a wonderful video that you put together. And Bill and Doug, I know how many hours you have put in to this, this, uh, this passion that you have. Um, remember the classic movie, Field of Dreams? Uh, build the park and they will come. That's what your charge is, is it not? To build a dream for the Arroyo, for the longest and future, for this generation and those to come. So when it comes to money, yes, you need the money. But build the dream without the assumption that you will not have the money. Build the dream with the assumption that it will come. And I want to echo Nina's thoughts about the Arroyo being for nature more than it being for museums, shops, restaurants. It's a natural preserve, and that should be the highest priority. And I also agree with her 
that as far as funding is concerned, I think you have a little gold mine there in the Rose Bowl. And I think the city council should consider a portion of the funding, the profits from the Rose Bowl for um, this project, for saving the Arroyo. Um, I think if there is any money available, it should be put into the lo lower Arroyo, which is the most natural part. The, the upper part is natural too. Um, but um, there are many trails that are not well maintained. I live two blocks from the Arroyo, but I don't walk in the Arroyo. I walk on Grand because the sidewalks are safer for me to walk there than the trails on the lower, lower Arroyo. And so I think that priority ought to be placed in maintenance first. And I also agree with the idea that there ought to be adequate signage for uh, the trails and so forth. And then lastly, on the smallest level, uh, walking around the loop, the three miles around the Rose Bowl, um, may I suggest sooner than later that you put in water fountains and <laughs> benches. Okay? <laughs> and that's it. Thanks. That's great. Thank you. Hello. Hello. My name is uh, Marie Levine. I'm a Rose Bowl area resident and I frequently uh, go hiking around the trails, so I, I very much appreciate you know, the vision that you have. But I also share some of the concerns that you know, I've heard the past speakers talk about, um, namely you know, the commercialization aspects of this and the money. You know, I, I am very much in favor of the naturalization and the parks and making this the number one priority. Unfortunately, the 10,000 pound gorilla in the room, which is the Roosevelt Operating Company, and so the membership on this board uh, makes me a bit concerned as to the real um, un, you know, hidden goals here. So one thing I haven't heard, for instance, is um, I understand $350,000 have gone towards funding yet another consultant to come up with yet more plans. Um, I haven't heard what the goals of this consultant's work was supposed to be. Um, you know, it'd be good to understand whether the priority there is for the consultant to come back to you with ways to make more money, or is it really prioritizing the naturalization aspects of the Rose Bowl? Um, the other thing I haven't heard is, you know, who's going to be managing this money? You know, how is the money going to be prioritized? Who decides that? I mean, these are things that, you know, certainly as a resident, I need to understand better, because that will at least guide my understanding as to who, you know, what are the priorities? Right. right? Um, then just just like little little other com comments I have. So first of all, regarding the parking, I understand parking paying for you know parking is you know an easy source of revenue. Unfortunately, for those who live around the Rose Bowl, we all know that once you start paying for parking, people are going to start parking in the residents' neighborhoods. So um, you know I, I sort of foresee that if you go forward with that, that the resident associations around the Rose Bowls aren't going to be too happy about it because of the unintended consequences. And then finally, something you may not know, but um, I live right across the Sheldon Reservoir, which happens to be an uh, Indian burial ground. And it's a recognized Indian burial ground. It's been excavated in 1936 when the city made a reservoir at that park, at that area. So I certainly would appreciate if you know, that was uh, historical, historically recognized, because right now it's just land owned by PWP you know, to store their water. So that would be you. an important point. <laughs> <laughs> very important point. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Tim Brickett. I'm the managing director of the Arroyo Seco Foundation. I'm glad you're taking on the, the big vision and the big challenges. Um, the unifying element that makes the Arroyo what it is, is the stream. It is the river. It has carved its way from the mountains all the way up at Mount Wilson through 11 miles of the mountains down into Pasadena. And then it's carved its way through Pasadena and through the Raymond Fault at the bottom of Pasadena down into the Los Angeles River system. A hundred years ago, native fish used to go up and down that river. They would go out to the Pacific Ocean and they would come back to the mountains again. The best gift that we can give to future generations is to restore that stream and to do everything we can to reestablish a more natural floodplain in the Arroyo Seco, one that protects people from floods, but that doesn't destroy the natural values. The flood system that was put in by the County of Los Angeles 100 years ago was an experimental facility. Devil's Gate Dam was the first dam. The channel 
was among the first channels that they built. There's many elements that they did not consider when they built that system. And it's time to take a new look at how do we manage stream resources, water resources, and natural resources. You know, I've been through the planning processes for 30 years here in the Arroyo Seco. I, I've heard, and generally there's tremendous public input, and there's a, after the issues are generally sifted out, almost the unified voice that comes out is let's naturalize the Arroyo again. And I think that's what you're going to find here this time. I certainly hope so, because that's our legacy to future generations, is to restore a natural Arroyo Seco. The Arroyo Seco Foundation has been promoting a concept as part of the Army Corps of Engineers ecosystem study, which has gone on for 15 years. And we hope that you'll push the Army Corps and the County of Los Angeles to conclude that study so that we can have a plan for ecosystem restoration in the Arroyo Seco. And the plan and approach that we've favored is called the Arroyo River Parks. There are 30 parks and natural areas along the Arroyo from Hahamugna down to the Los Angeles River. And they all should be unified. And the parks should be part of the river. And the river should be part of the parks. And the planners should think about that. They should connect it with trails. They should create habitat corridors. That's really the best way and the best legacy that we can present for the future. So we hope that you'll uh, you know, move with that concept of a naturalization of the Arroyo Seco. But there are harsh realities that we have to face. And perhaps the most pressing one is the county's big dig project in Hamungna. Just yesterday, they announced their revised, their, their minor revisions to their environmental impact report for the big dig in Hamungna. The big dig is going to destroy Hamungna as a corridor. It's not going to be a, a hub for wildlife anymore. It's going to be tremendous devastation, and it's not just going to be during their ex excavation period, because they're going to maintain a permanent 50-acre scar zone right in the middle of the stream. They are going to rip the guts out of the environment in the Arroyo <coughs> Seco. And anything you do as a committee will be undone as soon as the county's trucks start running. Now, I'm not saying some sediment program doesn't need to be done, but it should be done in a slow and careful way, and that is not what they're doing. And the county supervisors are gonna take up this issue again probably within two months. There's a 45-day review period on the environmental impact report. The, de the deadline is September 8th for comments for the environmental impact report. Your committee should be making comments on that. And your committee should be urging the city council to engage with the county supervisors who can establish a true, sensible, and sustainable sediment management program for Haumunga. If you don't, everything you do will be undone by that. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, Hello, one, everybody. If I could interrupt for just one second. I just want to be mindful of the time. So we do want to get through the people who have gotten in line for questions and comments. Um, but after the gentleman in the blue shirt at the back of the line, we will ask that you submit comments in writing or on our website so we can get everyone out of here around the time that we said the meeting would end. Uh, thank you. We have just a few more minutes left. Thank you very much. I'll make my comments brief. Um, I reiterate completely uh, what the Arroyo Seco Foundation represents uh, and what this vision is. My name is Dorothy Wong. I live in Altadena. Uh, I am a lover of the Arroyo Seco. I spend every day there, every day, either in Pasadena by the Rose Bowl or up in Altadena in the Arroyo Seco. So one Arroyo means we are all connected. Who is we? We are the people. Are we first on the food chain? I don't think so. We are the wildlife. We are the soul, the heart of Altadena, the mountains, Pasadena, all the way to Los Angeles. And that should be what one Arroyo represents. Not a commercial hub, but the soul of our city. Within the soul of our city, we need to make it appropriate along the way. The Rose Bowl is there. We need to have balance for bicycling, 
for pedestrian movement, for animal movement, from the mountains to downtown Los Angeles. If we're going to be bringing people in, we should consider bus service and not car service. Uh, all of those things create balance. One Arroyo is balance for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Jim McQuarrie. I am um, a Pasadena resident. I live in northwest Pasadena near Arroyo, uh, sorry, brain damage, um, near Fair Oaks and Orange Grove. Um, and I have for the last uh, 16 years been a, an instructor with the Pasadena Roving Archers. Um, I am not a member of the board. I do not represent them officially in any way, although for a few years I was one of their city liaisons. And the reason I'm speaking tonight is I'm a little concerned. We have been a part of the Arroyo for 81 years, and as I told you, uh, Mr. Bogart, at one point a few years ago in, before the city council, we feel as if every five years or so we have to come to the city and beg for our continued existence because the city doesn't want us there. The neighbors don't want us there, and they don't want us there because the attitude expressed by some neighbors at the Rec and Park Commission and city council is that the central Arroyo is a draw for the region and the lower Arroyo should be locals only. One neighbor said there should be a gate with somebody checking IDs and making sure that if you don't, if you don't live in this code, you can't come in. They said that. And the same person also asked the commission, how much revenue does the archery range generate? I'll pay you double that to shut it down. So there's, there is some, some animus. And, but now this proposal of one Arroyo gives me hope uh, that we're seeing that the entire Arroyo is to be considered a, a regional draw, and we believe we could be a very, and I have to apologize, I'm saying we, I consider the Roving Archers to be my home. It's where I buy back my soul every week, so I'm gonna say we, even though I don't represent them. Um, <clears throat> we consider ourselves to be a very important part of the Arroyo. The mayor at his meeting a while back characterized us as a bunch of people who think we own the Arroyo. I would submit that the people who think they own the Arroyo are the ones who are currently suing the city to shut us down, some of whom are represented on your commission. Uh, which I consider a conflict of interest, but we won't deal with that. Um, and the mayor also said that it was probably this plan was going to result in, quote, temporarily displacing the archery range for, ooh, 10 years or so. I would suggest that if we were considered a valuable resource to the city and a longtime participant in the Arroyo's health and well-being, uh, that that would not be even considered on the table. They put the channel in while we were there without displacing us. They ought to be able to take it out without displacing us. Um, we have been good stewards of the neighborhood. We call the police when we catch homeless people trying to climb the hills into the backyards above. We call the police and report graffiti. We have very little vandalism in the area that we're at. We try very hard to protect the environment. I have a letter from the early 1970s from the club uh, detailing our concerns about the growing drought conditions as a result of the installation of the channel some 20 some odd years before. So we have always been a actively involved with the environment. I would like very much to see Pasadena Roving Archers in your next slide presentation as one of the stakeholders. I would really love to see somebody from the club have a seat at the table so that we would, could continue to serve the community as we have. We've run public lessons for free at no cost to the city for 50 years. There has been no range maintenance cost to speak of to the city. We pay for the bales. We pay for the, the structures. We have provided everything. I have personally taught 4,000 Pasadena residents how to shoot a bow, most of them under the age of 10. Uh, last year we had 2,500 Pasadena residents out of the 11,000 that we had down at our classes. So, um, we're considerably less than nine acres and we served more than double the number that we heard earlier that a park should serve. So we are doing our part as good members of the community and we would very like, much like to continue to do that. We'd like to see a bus stop somewhere in the area. It's the only park in Pasadena that doesn't have a bus stop within a mile. We'd like very much to continue to contribute to our city. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Misha Anderson. Um, I'm a Pasadena resident. Um, I'm also a member of the Pasadena Complete Streets Coalition. Um, I'm really speaking as a Pasadena resident on this particular um, thing. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, uh, 
There's, I think there's a lot to like in um, what has been presented today in the visioning, lots of beautiful um, images and things to think about and possibilities for the future. Um, what I'd like to address is the community input that you're planning, um, and I'd like to know like what, uh, it, if there's more to sort of your, your, your method of taking in comments from the community, because um, my observation about uh, meetings like this and, and many such efforts is that um, people stand up, they give their input, they put in their input onto the website, they write their comments on cards, and it kind of disappears. <laughs> um, and I, I think that if there are some good ideas and some good concerns that are coming out of the community, that that loses um, kind of the, the opportunity for um, the rest of the community, for other people to hear it outside of this room, you know, um, and outside of those cards that only you guys get to see. And um, so you lose an opportunity for, um, for uh, enthusiasm from other people in the public to aggregate around good ideas that come out that may not have been ones that you present. Um, so I guess I'd, I'd kind of like to challenge you to maybe broaden how you're doing the community input and figure out um, a way, maybe you can imagine near this for us, Mr. Han, um, a way to um, kind of like put together, collect all these, but also to sort of share them and, and allow all of the community members who are making comments to share them um, and so that they can have like random people like me who, um, <laughs> you know, to, um, to weigh in, you know, sort of put in the marbles into the into the buckets kind of thing and not necessarily have to like gather a movement or, you know, <laughs> right, right. Um, get all their friends together. Um, and um, so kind of on that note, um, if Art Center can have a class and if we can consider maybe a class for PUSD kids, why not a class for all of us? Why not a class for the general public or workshops or something like that, you know, where we can learn about what's happened, what the constraints are, you know, you can let us in a little bit more to, uh, to what you're working with and allow us to really dig in a little bit more and share and bounce our ideas off of each other. That seems like a good idea. <laughs> the the one Arroyo day that I mentioned earlier will be a, an opportunity for a lot of input and a lot of learning about what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. I think part of the, I mean, we're filming tonight, which is a piece of it, but uh, the idea you're putting forward, which I like, is trying to get these um, ideas collated and back out to you again so that you can see what people have said, not only at this meeting, but other meetings like it. So that, that way you get kind of a consensus of the community uh, not just something that we keep in our, you know, our card deck, but something we can share back with you all. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to share with you something about, um, that I just learned about recently, which is that the National Park Service offers a program to do just what the city is apparently trying to do provide recreational opportunities while encouraging protection and awareness of the natu natural environment. And they also I, help identify sources of funding. Um, I don't know what this costs, but I'm sure it doesn't cost $350,000. And it sounds like it's a much more directly related to what you are trying to do than um, the High Line in New York. Um, I'm just offering that as a suggestion. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Eric Callow. I'm here representing the Pasadena Casting Club, uh, which has <coughs> been uh, collaborating with the city uh, for 70 years now. Uh, I'm providing instruction for uh, people to learn how to fish, how to fly fish, how to cast, uh, to have appropriate activities. and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and to learn about conservation. So uh, the club, I want to read or, or, or emphasize here that the club is highly supportive of the naturalization of the park and, uh, and those efforts to uh, coexist and to augment all the uh, activities that appreciate that, that natural setting. That said, uh, I hope that in this process of listening and considering there will be careful consideration of, of appropriate recreational and sporting activities and that uh, the considerations will be made to uh, make those, those activities possible because I believe 
They are part of the cultural fabric of this city and of the Arroyo and uh, deserve uh, to not be lost in the effort to recreate a natural setting. Thank you. Well, well said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for everybody coming out this evening and sharing your thoughts and comments and concerns. Um, they will not go into a black box. We will find a way to get the information back out to you um, so that you can see what others have thought of at other community meetings. And as I think it's been mentioned a couple of times tonight, this is just the beginning of the outreach efforts. Um, there will be more meetings, there'll be small meetings, there'll be larger meetings, there'll be a way to interact with us online, um, in writing, and in person. Um, we want to do our best to make sure that we are able to get to groups of people who can show up to meetings like this and groups of people who are not able to show up to meetings like this. Um, in the meantime, though, please do keep an eye on our website. It's uh, onearroyo.org. Um, you can go to that website to get more information about the effort as it currently stands, as well as to see what's going to be coming up in the future. Do please save the date, November 18th. It's a Saturday that will be the first of what we hope will be um, many One Arroyo days, where we can really celebrate the, the One Arroyo and the true treasure that it is. Um, and I promised we'd be out by 8, 8 o'clock. I lied a little bit. It's about <laughs> 8.15, but I'd call it a pretty good evening, and thank you very much for being here. Thank you.